Nissi have taken their first steps into the lens market with an exciting 15mm f4 wide angle designed specifically for full frame mirrorless cameras and in this video I'll be reviewing this one that has been used and tested on the Canon EOS R5. Run the intro! For this video, we are in the surfer's paradise on the Gold Coast, Australia. This central hub of the Gold Coast tourism market has plenty to offer with street photography, helicopter tours over the city, and so much more. If you want to get a truly in-depth look at surfer's paradise and the rest of the Gold Coast, check out my series, Top 5 Photo Locations, for more. Now, let's get into the body of this review. Now, when you start looking into full frame lenses, the majority of them are going to be pretty bulky and heavy to carry around or move with you. One of the things I found with this lens specifically was when taking it out in the field, it's easy to move with. The weight comes in at 470 grams. Now compare that to something like the Samyang 14 mil weighing 484 grams, or even the Canon RF 15 to 35 weighing 834 grams. This one is great to travel with. The physical size as well is smaller than what you expect, being a nice feature of the lens. Now, when the lens is first pulled out of the box, you get the feeling of a well-built lens and it has an all metal construction. Now, from my discussions with Nissi before getting this lens in, the elements inside are glass as well, which really helps to boost the image quality, but we're going to get to that shortly. Now, full disclaimer, Nissi did send me this lens for review and to test so I could share honest results with you. If you are seriously considering a lens like this and wondering what it's like to use a manual lens, I can share a bit of personal experience with you. In my earlier days of photography, I used to use a Samyang 14mm wide angle lens on a full frame 6D. At first, it may take a little bit of getting used to as there are no electronics in these lenses, meaning autofocus or electronically changing the aperture is not possible. The thing with the manual lens is, you guessed it, it's manual. The benefit of this style of lens, however, means you have to slow down a little bit and really consider what you're capturing and think about the capturing process, which is a peaceful way to enjoy photography. The 15mm lens is aimed towards landscape and cityscape photographers, as it's ideally suited to capturing that style of image. It's also a great option if you need a wide angle lens to get into something like real estate photography, for example, as it's affordable and it suits capturing a room in full wide field of view. Now, speaking of image quality, for the price and size of the lens, it delivers great results. Corner to corner sharpness is really good, especially when you use apertures of f5.6 to f11. And if you're a landscape photographer, you'll find that very beneficial. One of the biggest things in this lens is that it's a Sunstar lens. If you haven't heard of a Sunstar or aren't sure what one is, a Sunstar is the effect you see when you get the rays of light coming from the sun or light source in a photo or video. Basically, it's a way to make the sun look good in a photo. The way this lens has been designed is to create that effect and it does it really well, might I say. At every aperture from f4 to f22. Now on most lenses, the effect can only truly be achieved at f-stops from f16 to f22 most of the time, which then starts to introduce diffraction or softening of the image. So now even at f4, you can create this awesome looking effect without too much trouble from flaring or glare. It does have a little bit of that, but it's not as bad as other lenses that I've used. Let's have a look at a few pros of the lens. And I'll start with what I think is a huge pro, and that's filters. If you've been subscribed to the channel for a while, you would know that I'm a long time user and advocate of Nissi filters, as well as a reseller for them. In the whole time I've used filters, I've always stuck to the 100 millimeter system and have even done a full series of videos about them. 
When I used to use the Samyang lens, one of the biggest issues and problems I found was the inability to use filters to capture the image I really wanted to create without having to upgrade to the 150mm system. Nissi have obviously listened to that and been able to engineer the lens in a way that has a 72mm filter thread on the front and it lets me use the filters I really want to use. It also saves you from buying a whole new filter system. The rings on the lens to change the aperture and focus are also really nice and smooth as they glide really well and are really easy to adjust for when you need to move your focus and your aperture. To balance out the pros, here are some of the cons I've found. Being a manual lens, you don't have any autofocus or electronic aperture, so you will need to change this yourself, and it slows your workflow down a little bit as I explained before. One of the other things I found was that the lens hood, which is also made of metal, doesn't really lock into place properly. Now, I do have a very early model. This, I believe, is pre-production. And I've had a chat to Nissi about it. And this is something that I've been told has been looked at and is not a normal issue. So I don't think in the full production one, you're going to have any of these problems. The F4 aperture is great to be able to keep the weight down in the build but for astrophotography, it may fall a little short. Now, don't get me wrong, I have shot astro and night sky images at f4 with excellent results, and I will be testing this for it too. But to do that, I just had to push the ISO a little bit higher or extend the shutter speed a little longer just to compensate. So, my final thoughts. The lens is excellent. For the price, it's easy to use, produces great results, and is perfectly suited to the landscape and cityscape photographers of you out there. Especially if you want to be able to use your filters without having to upgrade them, or spend an absolute fortune on a Canon 15 to 35 lens, as an example. I don't think you'll go wrong with this. I've really enjoyed using the lens, and it will be staying in my kit when I want to go out and capture waterfalls, landscapes, or cityscapes, and take advantage of having that sun star effect, which is great for me, as I really love to have that element in my images, and get a slightly different look and feel without exceeding the weight that I want to actually carry on my back if I'm going hiking. I hope you found this video of benefit in making a choice of whether or not to go with the Nissi 15mm f4 lens. If you want to check out this lens, click on the links in the description down below for more info or to get one yourself. If you did enjoy it, hitting that like button and subscribing with the bell icon is really appreciated and it helps to keep this content coming for you and others that may find it helpful. While you're here as well, check out this playlist that you might enjoy.